Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and I'm an AmeriCorps service member at the Coastal Land Trust. The Coastal Land Trust is a nonprofit organization that protects land along the coastal plain of North Carolina. We have protected over 80,000 acres. We protect land with cultural, ecological, or historical significance. Some of the lands we have protected are home to a variety of carnivorous plants. In this series, we will be uncovering some of the mysteries of carnivorous plants. So what does carnivorous mean? Take a second to write down what you think the word carnivorous might mean. Some of you may know right away, but for those of you who are not familiar with this term, we can look at some clues to help us figure it out. Vegetarians are an organism whose diet mainly consists of vegetables, fruits, nuts, and other grains. A carnivore would be the opposite. A carnivore is an organism who primarily feeds on animal matter, or in a Venus flytrap's case, different types of insects. Organisms adapt over time in order to fulfill the needs that they have to survive. We will be looking at adaptations later on in this lesson. But first, let's look at ecosystems and what makes Wilmington so unique to be able to provide the habitat for carnivorous plants to thrive. An ecosystem is a variety of populations living in a community, interacting with biotic, living, and abiotic, non-living elements. There are a variety of factors that make up the ecology of an area. Some of these factors include the type of soil, amount of water, and variations in temperature. These flytraps can only be found within a 100 mile radius around Wilmington, North Carolina. There are nearly three dozen species of carnivorous plants that live in North Carolina. We will explore some of these different species later. So what are some of the unique factors in Wilmington's ecosystem that make it just right for Venus flytraps? One factor is the soil. Our soil here in Wilmington is very low in nutrients. A Venus flytrap is found in spongy, nutrient-poor soils such as in coastal swamps and wet savannas. The type of soil is acidic and infertile, but the Venus flytrap is particularly adapted to this environment where other plants could not grow. The Stanley Reader Carnivorous Plant Garden in Wilmington, North Carolina is the only public carnivorous plant garden in the world. This is a great location if you want to observe carnivorous plants in their natural habitat. Carnivorous plants have adapted in a very specific way. Their main adaptation is being able to consume insects. An adaptation is a characteristic that an organism develops over time in response to its environmental factors. Why would carnivorous plants adapt to eat insects? Some factors that led to this adaptation are having a lack of nutrients in the soil. Just like we need nutrients from the food we eat, so do plants. Carnivorous plants live in areas where the soil has poor nutrient levels, such as the sandy soil found on the coastal plain. In order to survive in these conditions, carnivorous plants have adapted to get their nutrients from other sources. There are five different trapping mechanisms used by carnivorous plants. Pitfall, adhesive, snap, suction, and lobster pot. Let's take a look at the different type of mechanisms that carnivorous plants use to trap their prey. First is a snap trap. Snap traps utilize rapid leaf movements to close around prey and trap them. They secrete nectar on the inside of the trap to lure in their prey. Next is a pitfall trap. Pitfall traps attract their prey with nectar and a colorful appearance. The slippery pitcher-shaped leaves cause prey to fall into a pool of digestive enzymes located at the bottom of the pitcher plant. Adhesive traps use specialized tentacles that secrete a sticky substance to trap and immobilize small creatures. The sticky substance is also the digestive enzyme that will digest the insect once it has been captured. Suction trap uses a bladder-like leaf that contains air. 
When a bug comes in contact with the cilia outside of the trap, it releases a trap door which sucks in the prey like a vacuum. A lobster pot trap acts as a maze with an entrance that is easy for prey to find from the outside, but as they go further and further inside, they get trapped and can't find their way back out. Now that we've gone over the different types of trapping mechanisms that carnivorous plants use, let's see if you can tell which plants are real and which plants are made up in this next activity. There's a downloadable activity linked on the same page as this video called Believe It or Not. The full descriptions will be available for you after this video. Your challenge is to decide which of the following plants are real and which are imaginary. And in the next video, we will uncover the answers to this activity. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and understand a little bit more about carnivorous plants. I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna get an up close look at carnivorous plants. Bye.